Hi, I'm going to show you how I do my no need uh, sourdough bread, just a white bread. So tonight I'm just going to be making this the dough. So I've already fed my starter and it's uh, peaked out a little while ago, so it's fine for using. And uh, it's beginning of winter, or it's, we're in the deep of winter, I guess. And so I'm going to use 100 grams of starter today because our house is fairly warm. But uh, it'll be good for getting the dough ready in the morning. So. Oops, I got a tear. There we go. Okay, that's at a hundred. And uh, now I'm going, I do two, I'm just gonna do one right now so you can see the process. Um, anytime I do starter, I like to mix a little water before I actually add the rest of the water. So in this situation, I'm gonna be adding 690 grams of water. So I'll start with around 50 or yeah, let's go to 50, right at 50. And uh, then I will just take a knife and start incorporating the, the dough in the water. I want to kind of break it down with a little bit of water before I throw a whole bunch of water in there. Otherwise, it just doesn't break down. Okay, so most of it's in there, it's aerated. And now it'll receive the rest of the water. So 690, I need 640 grams. Okay. And then give it another stir to make sure it's incorporated. And then I need to give it 20 grams of salt. So it's, I'll tear my measuring or my, again, and I like to use the shaker part so it doesn't actually dump out a clump that way over does my salt. And then give that a, another stir. If you ever go away from your, your bowl at this point and you wonder, did I put salt in there or not? You can dip your finger and tell or the look of the water is different once the starter is there. The, just the way the residue along the sides, it, it, very indicative of salt in the solution. So now I need to add flour and I just basically dump it in. In this case, I have a big bag. I normally use bread flour for this. I really strongly recommend bread flour, although I don't have any, so I'm just using all purpose. And I need to add 870 grams of flour. 
And where most bakers, they just add flour as they go once they're shaping their loaf. But um, with a scale, you don't need to do that. 870. Okay, so then I take a spoon. I prefer this little white nylon spoon. And uh, So what I want to do is just incorporate this until it is consistently, I mean, so all the water is soaked up and all the dry flour is absorbed by the ball. And so this is a stiff ball, but it's very workable with a, a spoon. And once that's done, I take my dough knife actually a, a bowl scraper and uh, just scrape down the bowl getting all that flour off and then give it another dab of stir just to bring all that in. I don't want any raw flour left that could get on the ball when I shape it in the morning. So. So that is it, and I'll be back in the morning and go through how to process it. Good morning. Uh, it's next the next morning uh, at 11.30, so that means it's been about 13 hours from when I made the dough last night. When I made the dough, let's see here. It, it would have been about this height, maybe a little bit lower than that, and now it's up getting closer to the height that I normally like. Um, and uh, I don't know, it's, a, it's probably um, double the dough ball size in my guess. And often they suggest far less rice than what, uh, what I like to achieve. Um, one reason why I like to push my, my bulk ferment a little bit longer is just to um, get as much fermentation of the flour as I can. I want a very good fermentation to take place where there's the, the least amount of flour that's non-digested as possible uh, as we eat it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to shape a loaf. And uh, this I, I do baskets. I don't do anything fancy. These are were just baskets that I commandeered from my wife's collection and uh, they're different shapes and it works. So this is my preferred shape right here. Um, this is a bit of missing plus. It's a French term for getting everything in its place. Um, and I'll kind of go into what I have here. Um, so I don't need my oven mitts. I don't need my lame for storing yet. Um, I do have a dough knife and a bowl scraper, but because my uh, concrete uh, countertop is not perfectly flat, this will scar it, this won't. So even though I prefer this, this is what I use. Um, this is uh, sprouted whole grain wheat flour. Rice flour also works very well. You just want something that doesn't have gluten in it or a minimal amount of gluten because you, this will be raw on the loaf um, until it's cooked, but it won't be wet. And so I want to have something that's as inert as possible just to not aggravate uh, people's gut systems. These are just grocery bags that don't have holes that I use to wrap the, 
the baskets to keep the balls, uh, the dough balls moist. And uh, so let me show you how this works. I, I like to use a sifter to spread the, the flour, the rice flour or sprouted flour on the thing. And because it comes so, so fast, I just have a piece of paper towel that covers 90% of the surface. I just want a little bit of flour on it, just enough to keep the wet dough from sticking. Um, this dough is fairly wet. It has to be wet to work in a no need system. And so um, if it's not wet, it won't, it won't uh, ferment. So I just get this fairly full. I'm gonna be using it at several different times in the process. So I just wanna get a nice even coat. I always bake two loaves when I do this. And they're both, uh, my recipe or my formula is for basically, uh, kilo, I mean, I think it's a kilo, maybe a kilo and a half um, wet weight. And so I think it's about a kilo when it's baked. Um, so I don't want any flour on my work area. I want to keep, keep all my dough um, just on the, the surface, whatever countertop you're working on. And I wouldn't do this on a wooden, uh, unless it's sealed, but not, this is not a bread bowl type of thing. This is just a hard surface that you can move the dough around on. So I like the bowl scraper for just being able to cleanly remove the ball from the container. And a word about the containers, I like to use as vertical a wall as possible, one that is transparent or translucent. And uh, I want to be able to see the rise of the dough. And a round-bottomed bowl doesn't tell you anything about how much the dough has risen. You need something that's consistent all the way up, as, as consistent as possible. So one goal is that I have is to get it out in the center of my work area. This um, is a no-need process, but it relies on one stretch for the whole process. I want to drive my, my scraper down into the center of the ball. And I just want to work around to try to get any thick areas of dough stretched out. I want to do it without tearing holes as much as possible. Okay, so that is now pretty well stretched. I now just gather it up in a package. And this is the extent of what you might call kneading, but it's just one little stretch. And you do not want to work out, you don't want to pound out or, or push out that dough. You want to preserve as much air as you can in the dough. And then once it's round it up, or once it's uh, bundled up, I just round it off. And what I want to do is give the, the dough on the outside of the ball of dough as much exercise as I can without tearing. And now it's it started to tear. I'm gonna stop right here. Uh, this is a no knee, or this is a, a, not a bread flour. It's an all purpose uh, flour. And so it can't take quite as much working as a bread flour dough or a bread flour in the dough, but um, that is good for now. Okay, it's been about half an hour, maybe even 40 minutes. And uh, you can see the dough has relaxed somewhat. You always want the dough to relax between initially shaping the ball of dough and then coming back and doing the final shaping. So this is ready for the final shaping and I'll put it on the, the linen and into the basket at this point. So I take my dough scraper again 
and want to just gather the dough up in a ball. Thank you, Toby. And uh, I want to tie it up in a bundle. I, I use the dough scraper to get started, and then I just want to pull it. I'm leaving it on the counter. I'm using the counter to stretch the skin of gluten over it. You can see here how there's just a skin that covers the dough. That's what actually gives the, the dough shape. So I'm going to let that sit. While we're waiting for that, I'm just gonna shape the other, the other ball of dough and similar process, but there is a tear here, a gluten tear. That may cause me a little bit of problem, but I'm gonna try to stick it underneath the bottom. So see right now I'm rolling it over that tear so I get a new skin. And then just pull it into the shape I want it and then wrap it up. Okay, so now I just need to wait just long enough for the dough to relax slightly. And uh, I'm gonna just take it. I turn it upside down. I like to hold the, the wound a little bit as I get, and these, these uh, linens are fairly stiff because of use. They're really floppy when they're new. And once it's in the basket, I just want to go around the perimeter. I don't want to put this in the middle in the opening, but just a little on the outside. I want to keep the, the dough from sticking on the linen. Once that's done, I put a plastic bag over it, tuck it in, and it will stay here like that for three hours. Uh, about three hours. I mean, it, it depends on the, the temperature, the um, amount of starter you use, and um, yeah, just the, I mean, the, the different things that affect uh, the starter also affect the amount of time it takes for the dough to rise. So I will show you that uh, the next process when we come back. So it's been three and a half or four and a half hours since I shaped this. And as you see, it's not really bubbly yet, which I kind of go for, but it's very wiggly, jiggly, like it's fat. And I don't do the finger test anymore. I just kind of more go by the look of the dough and often there'll be some bubbles, but uh, I probably didn't wait quite as long because it's, again, just the regular flour instead of the, uh, the bread flour. So I have a couple things that I do. And uh, right now I have, my oven is up to 500 degrees, which is what I start my baking at. And I have a steel, a stainless steel lid and a baking stone that have been preheated in there. And this is a super peel that I use to transfer my dough to the oven. So this has a conveyor belt. I think it's about 70 bucks on Amazon, but uh, it's really nice for pizza, for fragile uh, bread and different things like that. So again, I use this sieve to just put a little bit of flour. I try to cover any shiny spot. I also will kind of look at my, my towel separated if I need to. It looks like it's going to be okay. Pull out the towel. And there is the dough. Oops. I like to dry that because it's wet just from the moisture of the dough. And this is my lame. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. And for this, I just do a simple slash down the middle. This is just a razor blade in this handle. And uh, then I have an of glove that I use on one hand and a mitt on the other. Oh. 
top, the lid down, and then I'll just conveyor the dough off, and then cover it back up, slide the rack in, close the oven, and I take it down usually to 465, and just let it go from there. So I'm giving it 20 minutes with the lid on. What that 20 minutes does, it keeps the steam inside the lid. It's trapped there, and so it keeps the skin soft of the bread, so it allows it to rise. It's been 20 minutes, so I'm going to just take off the cover. Let me hit the light here. So we can see a little bit better. I actually forgot to set my timer, so it looks like I went a little long. Okay, so it's been additional time, and there is the loaf of bread. Just put it on a tray to cool, otherwise the bottom will get soggy. And I'll put the pan back in and bring up the temperature. I always start out at 500. 